Hi, I'm David Henry Huang. I'm a playwright, and uh, we're currently running a revival of my play Dance and the Railroad here at Signature Theatre Off-Broadway in New York City. This has been a big dream of mine to have a season at Signature Theatre. Um, certainly um, a lot of the major American playwrights that I've always admired and have idolized, and, you know, whether it's Edward Albee or August Wilson or Tony Kushner have had seasons, so it's really exciting to get, um, get one for me. Uh, Maya Dralis is a director whose work I've admired for a long time, but this is the first time that we're getting a chance to work together. Um, and basically because this is an older piece, and although I've tweaked a few lines here and there, um, it's, I, I haven't rewritten it extensively. So um, it's really been an opportunity for me to kind of watch May work, and of course she always wants to know how I feel about uh, different choices that she's making. And, um, and I give her notes, and, but basically um, I wanted to, you know, this is a play that was originally done in 1981, uh, and I was just a little kid, and um, the, so to have a director come in and do a new interpretation of it, that's the thing that's been most exciting to me about this process. I mean, for me, theater is first and foremost about trying to be a good artist, um, and I think that if I'm not creating a work or writing a, a, a play that works as art and entertainment, then no one's going to want to see it anyway and it's not going to have any effect. Uh, as, a, as a minority in America and particularly coming up, you know, in, coming up in the period that I did um, and being exposed to a lot of the politics of the 70s, um, I do tend to think that way. So those are the t issues I tend to explore, although I don't really like it when, I don't like my plays to have just like one message. It's not like I'm trying to say, you know, everybody should leave my play thinking a particular thing. But I do like people to think around certain issues, um, and that interests me and hopefully will interest audiences as well. Well, I think in the 70s and 80s, being an Asian American playwright, um, you just had to, it was so relatively new that um, I was lucky to get productions uh, early on and, you know, very young. Um, the Dance in the Railroad, which we're doing here, was produced when I was 22 um, at the Public Theater here off Broadway. So I was really lucky in terms of getting good productions. But I think the work was kind of marginalized to an extent that, you know, it is somewhat today, but not as much. In other words, people kind of felt, oh, well, that's. Um, you know, that's ethnic theater, and that ethnic theater isn't quite up to the level of mainstream, it's sort of a second class kind of theater. So, um, so to, to be able to say that, you know, if you write a work about uh, with an Asian American story or an African American story, or, you know, it's it just by virtue of the subject matter, that doesn't make it a second class uh, piece of work. It can be just as important and just as universal as any other thing in the American theater. I think that was the big challenge uh, in the 70s and 80s, and I think that we you know, just feel that uh, we've made a lot of progress in that direction. You know, for better or worse, um, the, the lot of Asian Americans uh, in this country has always been a function of um, the relationship between America and uh, the root culture that we happen to come from. So, you know, during World War II, Japanese Americans got interned. And at the moment, um, China has uh, obviously risen, um, and there's, uh, there's a certain amount of anxiety that America feels towards the rise of China, but at the same time, it's kind of a cool time to be Chinese or to be Asian. I think when you're in a field that there, when there aren't too many Asian Americans and then you become, become prominent, Sometimes um, you become what I call the official Asian American. Like you're supposed to be like the one Asian American who speaks for everybody. And of course, no one can do that because the, the community in our community and any community is really diverse and there's a lot of different opinions. So ultimately, you can just kind of speak for yourself. But a community of artists can speak for a community and that started to happen more now and I'm happy about that too.